Well, hi there, good people. It's your boy, Johnny J, and welcome to another photo adventure. Today, we're in the south of New South Wales, looking out at the Snowy Mountains on an epic lookout, and I've got out the big lens, so bring in the big guns. We're gonna be zooming in on the landscape. So stick around, it's gonna be another fun one. We've made it up to the lookout and it's looking amazing. You can see behind me here, the sun is out, it's blue sky, but we've got this epic cloud layer behind you, heaps of drama. And I'm looking over in the distance and there's raw dappled light, which is what I want looking at those mountains over the back there. They just look amazing. So today what we're gonna be doing is getting out the big guns. I've got my uh, 200 to 600 mil on here. We're gonna set her up on a tripod and we're gonna be picking out details in the landscape. And uh, it's so much fun if you haven't done it, because it, you know, if you were to shoot with a wide angle lens off this lookout, you're just gonna get this wide perspective with all this crap in your frame, excuse the language, that's not necessary. It doesn't tell the story of this epic lookout. You know, you're gonna include things you just do not need. Because it's such a, a big, vast area, putting on a long lens just isn't gonna do this place justice. So getting a longer lens and zooming in, you can pick out those interesting details, really compress the scene and create some awesome photography. All right, let me get that up and uh, I'll show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so we're all set up now, and what I'm seeing is something awesome. These beautiful compressed layers of these mountains in the background. But before we get into actually what I'm photographing, I wanted to show you guys, and this is what I was talking about before. If you have a look here, this camera on top is actually acting like a wide angle lens. And you can see it's taking in absolutely everything, and it's just not pleasing at all. You know, like sure it's nice, it's a nice view, but really, What's the focal point of this image? You could say it's the front of the lens <laughs> as a joke, but honestly, if you were taking a photograph with a wide angle lens off here, you, it's hard to know what the photograph's about. Yes, sure, it's a pretty view, but there's no real focal point. There's nowhere for your eye to sort of settle to know that's the main subject. And that's why we get out the long lens and really zoom in. Now, let me show you the difference. I'll have a look through here. Let me see, show you something here. Now have a look at this. It's gonna be, it might be a little bit shaky there, but look at the difference. Look at that shot there. How incredible is that? That's way off on the top of those mountains there. I think I'm out about 500 mil on the lens on a full frame camera. And how beautiful is that compression that you're seeing through there? And look at that intense blues. And that's what I wanna convey. You know, that blue tone is just amazing of the snowy mountains there, because that's what I can see with my eye, these beautiful blues out there. So you can see the difference between that wide angle lens and then that telephoto lens. What a difference getting the long lens out and really zooming in, compressing the scene and showing off really the beautiful part of this lookout here, which is those beautiful mountains in the background. For me, that's the wow factor. The setup for this is quite easy because everything's so far off, I don't really have to worry about focus. I can focus all the way out there and everything's gonna be nice and sharp. I'm gonna be shooting around that F11 sort of mark. I could even go lower to be honest. I could even go down to maybe even, you know, that what this lens is capable of, which is, you know, 6.3 or something like that and still have everything nice and sharp because everything's so far out in the distance, everything's at affinity. So focus is not gonna be an issue here. Really the key to this is composition. So it's going to be panning around the horizon line zooming in, zooming out, finding interesting parts of the, the background mountains here to zoom in and photograph and uh, really composing them into something that's pleasing and almost abstract like. So what I like to do, even though I'm using a tripod, you know, to help film a little bit for you guys, I still would probably shoot this on a tripod. I just like the stability. I, I like the tripod taking the weight of the camera and the lens as well. And all I do is just loosen it off a little bit and just make sure I'm balancing the camera and then I can just pan around and move wherever I need to go to find that composition. 
and I'm finding some really cool stuff out there right now. For instance, let me show you what I see here. But um, have a look at that there. This is the sort of thing I'm really interested in. If you have a look there, you can see we've got layers upon layers upon layers. And because the sun's out in the foreground and there's clouds over there in the background, some of the scene is in, like some of the foreground scene is getting shadow. You can see the cleared valley in between is a defined yellow area. And then moving on through the scene, you can see those layers of blue rolling hills all the way to the background. So that's the sort of thing I'm looking for, those beautiful layers. You know, one thing about this type of photography, because I've got such a long lens of, and I'm really compressing the scene, the light near me right now doesn't really matter. The light out there is really what is important to me all the way off in the distance. And because we've got that beautiful cloud layer out there, we're getting beautiful dappled light coming onto our scene. And that's what's cool about this type of photography. You know, because we're zooming in, taking little portions of the landscape, the light doesn't matter a whole lot. Take a look at this scene here. Just awesome. This is what I love. You can see we're looking at, you know, where there's some clearing in the trees and farmland, but you can see it's like, there's a little bit in the foreground, some interesting um, trees around there. And then we've got a cool background. They're the sort of things I'm looking for. Uh, I really love scenes like this because it adds that extra bit of layers, you know, as I mentioned that light and dark. So they're the sort of things I'm looking for. And uh, as I pan around, you guys can come with me. It might be a bit shaky, but let's pan around and look for other things here. So that's interesting too. You can see in the background there, in the foreground, so something like that would be a photograph for sure. There's some nice light hitting that foreground mountain there. And look at those layers in the background. They are just absolutely epic. Let's tighten up that tripod a little bit there. And as we move around, let's just zoom out again. Moving around, let's see what else we can see here. Oh, this is a cool area. So look at this. There's almost like these really interesting waves. There's probably a photograph, something like that. You can see we've got the clear land on the right and the left and all the layers all the way through. I think that is really, really pretty. Absolutely love that. I'll get some photos of that in a minute. Again, and just panning around, having a look. And you know, you want to zoom in, zoom out, find interesting areas. So things like this area and, and that valley there, they may look a bit prettier when the light gets a little bit lower. I can't really see a whole lot now. It's quite flat through there and that's a tree. We don't want to focus on that. <laughs> and we're at the end of our pan now. So let's just pan back the other way. So I found three sort of compositions there that I think are really, really nice. Definitely, oh, this is cool too. Here's another one here. So something like that potentially. Uh, again, this might look a bit better, better when the light comes down a bit more. Light's still a bit harsh out there on that area. It's getting a bit too much sun now right there. So you can see right there, there's actually a shadow from uh, a cloud there. That adds interesting light. That dappled sort of light is actually quite nice for this type of photography. But I'm loving this valley and this, you know, the dark and light areas there. That really appeals to me. It looks really, really nice. We're just going to find a section that's pretty, oh, there's a nice section there. If you have a look, we've got mountains all the way to the background. We've got this lovely dark area and light area. Something like that would make a pretty photograph as well somewhere in there and we keep paying around some more interesting areas there let's have a look see if something else jumps out at me here and you know potentially something here there's a cloud quite a low cloud there right now you can see that's kind of interesting as well maybe once that cloud moves on that area will be interesting as well so you can see just panning around there with me while I'm looking through the, the long lens there's heaps of potential out there on the, on the horizon and uh, as that light drops just a little bit more, I'm hoping we get some of that light across the valley might look really pretty too, might soften off and look pretty across that cleared valley area as well. Anyway, leave it with me and I'll uh, get back to you in a minute once I uh, think the light's right and we'll take some more photographs. All right, that sun is going behind clouds now and really softening off some of that light across the scene. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's really, really beautiful. Let me show you what I'm looking at out here and I'll show you the difference between the light now. If we zoom into this area over here, you can see that light, how we've got those interesting shadows, interesting highlights. Even back here, you can see we've got some really interesting light laying across the scene if we zoom in there. Look at that, look at those pretty layers there that's coming out of the scene, really, really beautiful. Now, if I was to pan back over this side here and 
you'll see the light over this side is a lot harsher. You can see it's getting more direct light right now, and that light isn't as pleasing. So I'm really looking for that softer light right now that we're starting to get across the scene. We're getting those beautiful long shadows as that sun dips down, about half an hour to sunset now. It really is the perfect time to be out here looking for that interesting light laying across these beautiful hills out there and valleys. The other thing to think about is your exposure. You wanna be exposing everything up to the right hand side of the histogram, okay? That side of the histogram is where the, there's more information in the raw file. So if you were to look at the histogram, split it down the middle to the right hand side are the highlights and the lighter areas. The left hand side is the shadows and the darker areas, okay? So you wanna be exposing to the right. And the other reason why it's really important with this type of photography, because the raw files aren't going to be very contrasty and when you get them in post you're going to be pushing them and working them really hard to bring out that contrast to make them pop okay so it's really important exposed to that right hand side there's more information in that area of the histogram there'll be more information in your raw file and you're going to get better results when you start to really work those files in post all right good people that's it for the field work part of this video i'm just going to hang around here for about another 15 minutes and just watch that light and work that scene as i see interesting things to photograph it's so cool what you can do with a long lens compressing the scene in your landscape photography and uh boy all right let's jump over to lightroom and i'll show you what we're looking at here and how i process these photographs all right good people we're back on the computer let me run you through my three favorite images that i think turned out really really nicely starting with this one so this is one of the ones where that light came in, lit up the valley, and you can see these awesome layers through um, through the scene. And I love the shadow light, shadow light. It just gives these um, like abstract type layers all the way through the scene. I think that's a really pretty end photograph. And we've also got this one. So I have stylized this one. You know, I've made it black and white, I've uh, cooled it down a little bit, and I really did focus in on that. Uh, middle area there if i bring up the develop module here you can see there's the before after before after it's a real stylized look it's not it's not for everyone but i kind of like it i love that um that dead tree in the middle and the, it was just catching the light and i've just really enhanced that and stripping away the color has really just brought out the rawness of that dead tree in the middle and giving it that scarce square crop as well has just created that symmetry around that single dead tree in the middle so I think that looks really, really nice. And the last image, which I think is probably my favorite, is uh, one of the ones I was showing you in the video where we've got all those layers all the way back. So this is where I was saying, so this is the raw file, okay? And you can see how flat it is, okay? So I've exposed to the right, giving myself as much information as possible in this, uh, in this raw file to, to really push it really hard. And you can see there's my edit, brought in all that contrast, it's brought out those colors, it's accentuated all those layers all the way back to the clouds. Now, one thing that's really important when you're post-processing images like this, there's natural contrast in the foreground and then it drops off as it goes through the background. And your eyes actually see that as well. So, you know, things closer to you will be more contrasty and more colorful. And as things drop off into the background, there's almost like a haze that happens back there and that softness. And that's what helps give depth through the scene as well. So you really want to make sure that when you're adding this contrast, that you're not pushing everything in the background too far. You want that, you want that drop off of contrast to happen through the scene, particularly with images like this, because it really adds the depth it really adds to defining the different layers through the scene. And I think um, this is a brilliant final image. So there's the before, after. So the thing I like about these three photographs is they really create different types of images. You know, getting that long lens, zooming on different parts of that landscape or that scene out in front of you has allowed me to create some pretty cool, different, unique looking images. And uh, I think that's what's really exciting about getting out the long lens and picking out those details is you just never really know what you're gonna see until you get that long lens out and zoom right in and, and target in on little areas and wait for that interesting light to fall across the frame. Yeah, anyway, I love these images. I think they turned out great.
All right, good people, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed another epic photo adventure. Get those telephoto lenses out, get out there and pick out the, some details in the landscapes. Boy, it's really fun and uh, you'll be surprised what sort of images you'll come home with. Just awesome, just awesome. All right, so if you're enjoying these videos, do me a favor, show me some love, give me a thumbs up, drop a comment below. Let me know which image you like. One being the light coming through the valley, two being the mountains, and three being that single tree. So let me know, one, two, or three, which image is your favorite in the comments below? I'd really love to know. And if you're enjoying these videos and you aren't subscribed, do me a favor. My goal is a thousand subscribers. Please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell. You'll get notified when the new videos drop. Show me some love, support the channel, and I'd really, really appreciate it. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.